In the 1980s, Soviet Union wasn't only busy with the Cold War and the Perestroika, but also was trying to foresee the future in regards to the smart technology. And considering the economic reality of the USSR at the time, I find it rather fascinating that their scientists were still heavily invested in the development of the first smart systems, such as advanced TVs, laptops and watches. However, the most impressive of all I find to be their smart home system. The concept of the automized, AI-controlled households has been a dream of the humankind for a while now, and it is a popular subject of many sci-fi works. In the mid-1980s, the Soviet economy has already started to show signs of downturn. Nevertheless, many of the advanced institutions continue to receive heavy funding. Having the time and the resources, occasionally these institutions came out with wild and fantastical ideas that were ahead of their time at least by a few decades. So, in the famous Soviet technological journal called the Technichna Aesthetica, in the issue of 1987, for the first time the Sphinx smart home system was introduced. This smart home system still impresses the techies with its design and ambition. The concept was designed by the All Union Scientific Research Institute of Industrial Design, also known as VNITE, which was often simply referred to as Z Institute. The institute has realized the main drawback of the home appliances such as a TV, computer, music player, printer, acoustics, etc. The drawback itself being the lack of any linking system, they came to the conclusion that many devices often had parallels in functions to each other. For example, all the TV, computer and the music player could play the music. So their idea was to give up on the traditional appliances and instead opt for the creation of the functional blocks which were all part of a single system. According to the scientists, the central processor would receive the information from the outside through radio waves, cables and phone lines, and at the later stages it could retrieve the information from its own memory features. And in the second prototype, there were even plans to transmit the information digitally, information such as music, slides, video, texts, as well as educational and gaming programs. The institute theorized that with time the universal media transistors would be getting more and more compact, which could lead to the revolution in the home appliances across the whole USSR. According to the designers, the information received by the central processor would be able to be transmitted on the screens, monitors, sound systems and more. For example, the processor could deliver a movie onto the screen of one room while simultaneously starting a video game in the next room, while starting up your computer at your working room and playing an audiobook in the kitchen. That's pretty ambitious for the time, to say the least. Additionally, this system should have been able to take care of the apartment while the owners were out at work, while delivering the house status notifications to the watch of the owner. However, in order to make this a reality, the apartments of the Soviet citizens had to be heavily modified. In the apartment walls there had to be injected universal cables that would be able to receive the electricity, feed the electric appliances and control it through the central processor unit. As a side note, it is rather fascinating that even then, in the mid-1980s, the institute already had the prototypes and the elements for the accessory-based technology. Accessories such as smart glasses, that would cover your eyes with black shades on command, that would additionally display your time, temperature and your pulse. The Sphinx central processor was without a doubt the most important part of the system as the scientists were planning for it to deliver the information to the rest of the home appliances using the radio waves. Since this processor was rather small and carryable, its location could be at any part of the apartment and would be up to the preference of the user. Nevertheless, it should have been somewhere within the reach, since it was a disk-based system that would need a particular number of disks per household. These disks stored the memory and regulated the power output of the activities of each family member, and in the final design, it was decided it would be like one disk per person. The messenger and the video call systems such as Skype and smart TVs were also part of this product and the most impressive thing is, is that they thought that the system would become such a massive hit that it would become mainstream by the end of 1980s. Mm, yeah, though it's not clear if the institute really believed that or they were just daydreaming. In here we can see the remote control of the system just at the system itself, this remote was rather complex, as it had additional functions of a calculator, miniature TV and voice commands for the control of the entire house. And in this picture, you can see two versions of the central remote variants. 
This farm wasn't meant to be portable, but it was small enough for you to do so if you wished to. Today, the prototype of this home system still exists, but is located inside the institute itself and can't be accessed. However, just as the situation with the electric vehicles, the realization of this dream couldn't be fully delivered as the Soviet Union was approaching its final days. So guys, have you ever heard about the Sphinx smart home system? What do you think about the Internet of Things and about the AI homes? Kindly let me know in the comments below. So, see you in my next video. Remember to stay strong, stay healthy and to never neglect knowledge. Peace out.